All right, I'm all set up here. I've got my paper tape down. I've got some swatches here of different colors I'm gonna use. Um, I'm working from this reference photo, which is from a website uh, online that has all these copyright free images. Uh, so I will share that link down below. I'm gonna go for the overall feeling of this, not all of the exact details, but sort of the overall composition, um, the idea of bright colors. I'm gonna actually have more, you can't see very well in this printout, um, but I'm gonna have some more sun rays that come down uh, from, from above. And you, you can't see well here, but there's some swimming animals in the back. There's a cute little turtle. Um, and this actually may be a snake, but you can put whatever <laughs> um, sea life you'd like to be swimming uh, off in the distance there. So I will be referring to this. I'm gonna do a little line sketch first to get my overall shapes. So I've got a little bit longer uh, page than my reference photo. I'm just gonna make it go down a little longer, spread it out. You can always uh, trim in or frame in to a smaller piece of this, but you might as well go a little bigger if you've got the paper. So we want to give it a little bit of uh, dramatic line and uh, angle here. So we've got just you know one layer here in the front, all this beautiful coral and fish. Uh, I don't know exactly the textures I'm gonna I'm gonna have in here, so just want it to feel kind of natural. You know, no straight lines through here. And in the background, we've got these same sorts of uh, shapes, just kind of fading off into the deep blue. So it's up to you. You can decide, you know, the depth and how far back you want to go with things. Just keep in mind, you want to try and create a focal point, uh, a light source if possible. So we've got reflection here that we will want to keep white. And then um, you don't have to draw them in, but kind of think through how you're gonna have your, your light uh, shine down onto the ocean floor here. And you can, if you want to, you can kind of sketch in your little creatures uh, just to get a sense of where you'd be putting them. So I think I'll do a little sea turtle here. Kind of swimming. Um, and then just some of the elements that are gonna be up front. So mostly I wanna see what happens with the paint and um, create the coral that way, just kind of plop in color. I don't want too much of my pencil uh, to be shown, but if it makes you feel better to kind of draw some things in. There's some cool shells, uh, living shells down here. And there's only a few fish, but I might add some more. You know, just keep it loose. Don't worry too much about uh, getting it just right. You don't want to get hung up on these details. You just want to keep it loose. Uh, and simple. So there's some coral here. And you can always add more too, like if you want to add some seaweed that's going to come up from behind. Um, there's a big sort of fun coral shape here. Just look at the big shapes that these are creating. Don't, you know, get too much into the details of um, all the little individual uh, parts and pieces. So you can get textures in there. If there's things that are repeating, you want to pick up on that. A star shape. Another star there. There's little fish. 
you know, you can just give the overall, like I said, shape to things. There's a bigger fish here, um, a little bit longer, more oval, it's a fin on the back, a couple along the back. Some more fish up here. If you want to make it more of a school of fish, it's always nice to have some things go off the frame for movement. And it can be, you could make this one, this whole school a little bit bigger and maybe it will extend across in front of um, the reef here. The number of details is up to you. You can keep it really simple too and kind of focus on the landscape. My thought is to have some things that are really um, more colorful and in focus up front. And then you can just kind of suggest things and give mood in the background. Maybe there's a couple of like silhouetted animals that are swimming back there that you notice kind of later on. Um, that might be all I need for now. So one large fish, if you wanted to add some fish over here, you can always add those in. I think I'm going to use a little bit of uh, masking fluid to mask some of these fish so that I can get, make sure I get really bright colors on the fish uh, after I paint. So I don't have a ton of anemone around, you know, the really pokey ones, but I might want to add some of those in because they are going to be fun to paint. And if you kind of repeat some things around, um, that will be good for overall composition. All right, on to the next step. Okay, so we are going to do some masking fluid now on the fish so that after I paint the dark blue of the sea, we can keep the fish really uh, light and bright. So this is the masking fluid that I put in this little container. And I actually have this tool with kind of a soft plastic tip um, that's great for moving the masking fluid around once I put it down on the page. It comes out kind of quickly with this guy. So I will probably have to speed this up for you, but here we go. So I'm just going to add a dab to each fish. All right, it's time to paint. So I am wetting down my palette. Show you guys my messy palette over here. Already got a bunch of the paint out. Yes, it starts to mix on the palette a little bit, uh, but sometimes you need a good gray. So I, I find that this seems to work well enough for me and I can mix up big batches if need be. So. Got to get this straightened out here. Sorry about the lighting. I wish there was more sun today, more natural light, um, but we have to make do. So we want to use one of our bigger brushes. Uh, we're going to come down and do our wash uh, in the blue area in the back of our photo here. So. We'll come down, I'll probably stop at the foreground here and start to add some color, but we'll get it all wet, then we'll bring the blue down, and then we'll create our sun rays as well. So I'm gonna go with kind of an ultramarine blue. I think I'm gonna use just a big round brush. Uh, 
So get this blue kind of ready. Should have done that on the break here. Mixing up blues. I have blues and turquoise. And I'm first just going to go down and get the whole page wet. My water right now has a little bit of, even my clean water has a little bit of blue in it. Um, but that's okay because it's mostly going to be blue. So really, I'm just wanting to get this wet all over. You could spray it to kind of get it started. This is um, nice arches, 140 pound cold press paper, so it's gonna be able to handle a lot of water. Um, <clears throat> it always depends on the paper that you're using, um, how well and how it is going to deal with the water on the paper, the paint, so nice and wet all over. And then I'm gonna to start to bring in um, sort of lighter blues and then down to darker blues. So I've got a turquoise and I'm gonna kind of have the turquoise, the lighter blue up near the top. And then start to darken that blue as I go down. So my foreground here, I have to pay attention to where that is. It's just a light sketch. Excuse me, I have to go down there. I wanna get darker blue. And I will darken this up in a second layer as well but for now I just want to drop those colors in so we've kind of got our general wash now you want to be working with a lot of water but not there's always you know a little bit too much water can happen as well so I'm just going to drop some of that darker blue in there while it's still nice and wet now I'm going to switch to, I was going to switch to a smaller brush, but I think I will do a little bit of kind of a purple for my reef here. Just kind of up at the edges. Things are going to blend right now. It's all wet on wet. I want to try to avoid you know, pools of water around our fish so they don't feel like, you know, so it feels like it's moving down the page. Um, I have a little bit of a, a brown color, so I'm also gonna kind of drop that in a few places. Uh, also for the sort of coral and rock I want to make sure things are staying wet. So I'm just getting some of that around these lighter colors down in the foreground. And then I'm going to start dropping in, wipe up your edges so you don't have puddles of water there. Can pick up certain puddles with a dry brush. All right, I am going to go to smaller brush now and pick out some of these really bright coral uh, areas, anemones and things, and drop in color just really loosely. So kind of repeat some of your um, Some of your shapes and some of your colors because the same coral would repeat in other places. Clean your brush in between. I'm going to grab some purple 
a violet and drop in some there and let's see let's see different different spots around there's a lot of gold and orange in here so I want to get those colors in. I'm going to have this mustard, leaving some areas of white. Maybe have a little bit of this over here as well. Kind of help frame that in. And a brighter yellow in a few places. So this is more of a um, lemon yellow. And then a, an orange. We've got orange there and there. A little more of my brown rock color. Hopefully things are still pretty wet. Um, if you find things are drying, go in with a wet brush and add some water back in. You can spray in areas too. Um, you'll get some texture there with your spray but this is an underwater scene, so it might be fun to get some of that texture. So I'm just working while it's still wet. Dry brush there to pick some of that up. And there is more. There is um, some red, and I have a really fun, but this pyrol red kind of um, moves around the page in such a fun way. There's a little bit in here. The red really makes it pop. This one is kind of growing there. wipe this down, pick up some of my excess. There's still so much water on the page that it will move and fill in these edge, edges as you wipe them for the most part. So, kind of want things to be moving in certain directions, like growing upwards, right? So you can play with that. Again, I'm going to pick up a little bit of this extra paint around that's pooling around my fish. There's a little bit of green in there too. Some lime green. And I have a neon paint that is kind of fun to use sometimes. This seemed like the perfect scene. Where is that other bit of green? You can always add it in to kind of balance it out, make things repeat. In other places, my red is going way out into my I'm going to see some textures in there, so I'm just going to kind of use that. Same here. This is um, I want this red to be coral, kind of growing, um, but I don't want it to go too far, and I can see that it's still moving. So I'm just kind of simply dabbing it up there, very gently. 
I'm always looking for my favorite paintbrush. It's time to use it. <laughs> oh. Okay, so let's see, let me pick up a little bit of that. What else can we do right now before things dry? Maybe a little more up in that corner around here. So I've got, can do a little more pink here. Make that a little stronger. I'm gonna do some of that here. Let's see a little more purpley. Purple and blue, a little mixture. I'm just going to drop in a little bit of this, um, sort of an opaque, you know, brilliant, it's called brilliant pink, but it does some fun things um, when mixed in with these other colors. So I want to see how that plays out. It's more fun when it's wet, of course, it doesn't dry as. Um, as dark or rich. Things are drying up. This is still somewhat wet. We want to take a dry brush, a clear brush, and I guess it's not dry, it's a wet brush. We're going to do some of these sun rays. clean rag. Let that sit for a second. Maybe not long enough. More water. All right. 
just using this brush to give it a little more texture in here. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. Speed it up with a blow dryer. Just a little bit more. I'm hoping that these wet areas will create some interesting plant-like shapes. We may just have to change the shape of my um, coral reef there. We'll make it work with what we've got. All right, time to blow dry. I'm gonna let this stay a little bit white in here so I can use it for some of these lighter bright spots, but then I'll darken up behind. All right, so I decided not to let it fully dry yet. I remembered that I have this iridescent green paint, Daniel Smith, and I think I'm gonna drop that in in a few places, uh, maybe to define some edges um, create a few more plant shapes. We'll see. Just feels like it might be fun, fun thing to do. This is often how I uh, <laughs> approach my paintings. You kind of just have to let one thing lead to another. So I'm going to just drop in and create a little bit of an edge here with this green. Kind of look for the edges maybe that are already starting to happen. And then I want some of that to be happening over here too. So I think it'll help kind of tie some things together. and it will give it a shimmer, which is gonna be fun. Kind of look and see where else might be a little bit um, still wet, and then you can add Just in a few more spots. Kind of defining the edge of our foreground reef here. Now I will do the blow dry. Okay, so now we wanna go in and add details and, and a little bit of darkness and shadow. So I'm gonna go in with some of these same colors that I used for my bright uh, coral and I'm gonna go a little darker, smaller brush, pull out your smaller brushes um, I've got a round that is a number four, and I'll probably pull up some even smaller ones for some of the finer details. So 
I will start up in the pink area. Go with some pink.
Okay, I think now I'm gonna take off the masking fluid. So I will get started. You can use your fingers. Um, you can use sort of a rubber eraser lifter, but um, I'm going to go through and take it all off. So I will speed through this part. Okay, now I'm going to paint some of these fish. So I am going to um, pull up some tropical fish pictures online, just get some inspiration, look at some of the colors uh, and different patterns going on. You need to have some small brushes uh, for the detail. So you want to have contrasting colors with what's behind it so things pop out. And a lot of times they do have um, white stripes or brighter stripes so you either want to leave the white or you want to put a really bright color down first so for instance I think with these guys up here I will do a yellow um, just a really yellow fish and then we can go in and add some dark details, but in general, they're going to be a, just a bright yellow fish. Because that contrasts well with what's happening behind it. As you can see, they're not all perfect shapes, but from distance, it'll be fine. And I'm going to add in um, some green to go with this yellow, just for a little blend. So I'm looking at a fish for inspiration, but a little, a little brighter. Make the tails green. Make the whole thing kind of blend a little bit green from the back. These are the lemon fish. <laughs>
Okay, I've decided that I'm finished and I'm very happy with it. I think it looks great. I love all the colors, all the details. Uh, so now I'm just gonna take the tape off, finish it up.